Thanks for taking the time to join me on my channel, Nigel If you on things. How are you doing? How are you keeping? I hope everybody's safe and sound where you are. I look around in every single country. It hits mainstream news. There is something going on. There is something major going on. Cyber attacks, electrical failures, blah, 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 blah. I think we're being conditioned if you take a deeper look into it. This is my view on things. I've just put a couple of videos together. I could have made this a very, very long video. There's many things that I should have put in a video, but I didn't really want to make it too long. But I think you'll get the point. The last bit of video is quite interesting. I think you need to pay attention to this bloke and what he does for a job. any rate, this is just my view on things. I think they're being conditioned. But if you're awake, paying attention, you already know exactly what I'm saying. And if you look at the sky, you know that there is definitely, definitely something wrong. Of course, global climate change. Our governments would tell us if there was something wrong. There's an event happening, or going to happen, whether it'll be natural, and they know about it, or it's going to be scripted, man-made, and maybe the natural event will happen afterwards, while we're looking the opposite direction. Hey, who knows? If you don't get what I'm trying to show you, you never will. Much love, much peace, and I'll catch you next time. Happy New Year. The warning sirens blaring once again, signaling the latest provocation from North Korean dictator Kim Jong-un after North Korea launched another missile over Japan, the second time in a month, this one believed to be an intermediate-range ballistic missile. North Korea launching the missile from the capital of Pyongyang, passing over Japan just 10 minutes later and landing 1,200 miles off the coast of the Japanese island of Hokkaido, traveling 2,300 miles total. North Korea is at least claiming about this last test uh, is talking about a powerful electromagnetic pulse uh, that they say could knock out uh, entire cities in the U.S. It seems to me the stakes have gotten higher when this is not uh, just a hydrogen bomb, which is uh, massive enough, scary enough. But when you walk through this, uh, what exactly is an EMP? It's the burst of radiation when a nuclear weapon is detonated above the Earth. No blast felt on Earth, but the electromagnetic fields still reach the surface. What is going on? We don't have much time. Benjamin, what's up? Wh where have you been? It's all going to turn off. What? It's going to turn off, and it will never, ever turn back on. What's going to turn off? What are you talking about? Everything. Did I lose you? No, no. Miles. The technical problems began at 7.41 p.m., according to a spokesperson for the Rhode Island Department of Public Safety. Dispatchers answering 911 calls could hear the callers, but the callers could not hear them. A lot of questions remain, including what caused the system to malfunction. Public safety officials are now working with software developers and technicians to figure out what happened, but they say it does not appear to be anything suspicious. We're learning why 911 calls were rerouted in 26 counties across Tennessee yesterday. State officials say a software update by a location database company caused a number of 911 calls to be rerouted for about five hours. Around 1.30 Tuesday, the phones stopped ringing. Officials determined all of Hamilton County's calls were being rerouted to Sevier and Jefferson counties. 140 miles away. Dispatchers there took 80 additional calls from Washington County, some 160 miles away. Severe weather rolling through the area further complicated the problem. Yesterday was a very busy day. We had uh, several straight line winds, I think, come through this county, destroyed uh, mobile home, destroyed, uh, down a lot of trees, a lot of power lines. Uh, so we were we were very busy yesterday. And while the glitch was not considered an outage, this is not the first time folks were unable to reach 911. Our NBC affiliate in Nashville says this is the third time this year that thousands have been unable to call 911. In June, customers were unable to call the number for nearly six hours. In March, folks throughout the country couldn't get through. And last year, 7,000 AT&T customers were out of luck if they needed help when a fiber line was accidentally cut.
Despite the bank promising that no customers will be left out of pocket for any of the trouble, they seem no closer to knowing what's caused the week-long headache for customers. When things like this happen, you immediately think, well, what else can happen? You know, that, that there is a huge risk now from, from cyber attacks. Uh, the banks spend millions, billions of pounds on trying to ensure their systems are safe. But we've learnt this week from TSB that things can go wrong. After nearly seven days of chaos and confusion, the bank is promising to get to the bottom of the problem. But one week on and critics say their customers' patience is understandably wearing thin says in a new report that warns that the electric grid is the quote prime target of terrorists Americans are being urged to prepare for the up to six months without electricity transportation fuel money and health care what problem reaction solution because who are the real terrorists In a memorandum published by the Congressional Research Service in 2016, they even chronicled the potential failure of the electric grid and even wondered when it comes to the managing the preparations and aftermaths of what they call a cyber attack. When it comes to what? Surviving a catastrophic power outage quarterly business meeting that was conducted by the President's National Infrastructure Advisory Council as of December 13, 2018, barely two weeks ago. Why is your government so quaint on power outages and surviving them? What are they really getting ready for? But look at this, this emergency word that I got what the hell is extreme threat? When those messages appear on mobile devices. People should take those extremely seriously. It has some direct impact on either life or safety. National presidential alert system that will let any president issue a warning about a crisis. That could include a missile launched by another country. It was pandemonium in paradise after that alert was sent to phones throughout the state and broadcast on television. A missile may impact on land or sea within minutes. Shocked tourists and locals worried they were minutes away from nuclear annihilation. Probably familiar with the wireless emergency alert system that generates amber alerts and severe weather warnings to your phone. FEMA says it knows that some people don't like those alerts, but they say you shouldn't ignore them, especially these new alerts, which should signal very serious situations. CenturyLink tweeted in the past half hour that they are still working to fix these outages that have been going on for a full 14 hours now, and they're really affecting people in pretty much every corner of the United States. The website downdetector.com gives us a sense of what's happening. Look at all the red there in the state of Minnesota, or one of the hardest hit areas in the country, along with the Pacific Northwest and the Southwest U.S. They say that they're working on fixing it as quickly as they can, but they haven't said what's causing the outages, and they have not given any timetable for when they may be fixed anywhere in the country. Millions of people across the UK have been unable to access the internet all day from their smartphones after the O2 network was hit by technical problems this morning. Many have also been unable to make or receive calls. A software issue has been blamed for the problems. Started with a problem with its supplier, the tech firm Ericsson. It also meant some electronic timetables stopped working. Many cab drivers were unable to take card payment. And tonight there are new warnings that there could be far more problems across this industry in future. Russian hacking to influence the American election has dominated the news, but we've also noticed a hacking attack that could be a future menace to America. Last weekend, 
parts of the Ukrainian capital, Kiev, went dark, that Russia appears to have figured out how to crash a power grid with a click. Nearly a quarter of a million people lost power in this small Ukrainian city when it was targeted by a suspected Russian attack last December. But hackers could launch a similar attack in the U.S. Rob Lee is a former cyber warfare operations officer in the U.S. military and investigated the Ukraine attack. He told us some U.S. electric utilities have weaker security than Ukraine. And the malicious software the hackers used has already been detected in the U.S. We can't just look at the Ukraine attack and go, oh, we're safe against that attack. Even if we just lose a portion, right? If we have New York City or Washington, D.C. go down for a day, two days, a week, how does life look like at that point? It's very concerning that these same actors, same actors using similar capabilities and tradecraft, are preparing and are getting access to these business networks and getting access to portions of the power grid. In Ukraine, they restarted the power in just hours. But an attack in the US could leave people without electricity for days or even weeks, according to experts. Because ironically, Scott, America's advanced automated grid would be much harder to fix.